Well, here we are in the goat shed today. We're going to be working on a Decagon score reel. So um, we, today we want to show you how to take one out. We've just taken a circlip and the washer off the, um, the board. We're going to take one, two screws out, and then we're going to be able to lift the board off. Out that comes. And then we have the score reel in our hand. We'll lift that off carefully, being careful with the parts on there, and there's the, um, the pinion under there with the spring underneath it. Now, we're going to take the little washer out of there. This is going to strip right down. We're going to take the spring off, the return spring. And here we have the, the mechanism now. So we're going to undo the screws for the plate. Very simple. Just take these out. Now just before we started the video, we unsoldered the two wires off the coil. This gives you more room to move the coil around and makes it a lot easier. Fortunately, this game's got a reasonable amount of wire on it, cable, to um, allow us to do things. So off comes the end of stroke switch. We're so just, we're just, just going to move it out. The just got the nut driver on that. We'll just swing that up out of the road to allow the arm to come off. And the um, bracket, I should say. Just while we're doing that, this little thing here, that's what you call a check pull. That stops the reel from going backwards. So we always give them a little lift up with your finger just to make sure they're okay. So if your reel goes to step backwards, that's the culprit that's bent downward. Right, there we go. So we just lock that into place. Now, this is the fiddly bit. Oh, look how filthy that board is. See, we'll clean that up with a bit of alcohol in a minute. Now you just got to fiddle around with these, see, out it comes, and pop. There you go. That's pretty bad. Now the plunger, that's going to need, we're going to put that on the soft buffer and clean that up. Out comes the... Greased up. Out comes the rack, so it's all greased up, and you can see that white grease under there. That stuff, yeah, all here. We're going to put, get the Kero and toothbrush and clean all that up. And what we're going to do when we put it back together, we're going to show you how to adjust the switches and what they actually do. So we're just going to put the file through them and give them a little clean. It's easy to do it now. Yep, it's quite easy to do it now with the Everink out. Okay, now this particular game, um, the top switch is the ninth position switch. The middle switch is the run-out switch. That's the one that gives power to the coil. And the bottom switch is the zero position or reset relay switch, as Gottlieb tend to call it, on the side of the, the score rails there. There you go. So, um, we'll get a bit of alcohol, which we've got over there. And we'll get that onto a rag. And then we're going to polish this with a, uh, a chrome polish. Make it look all nice. It's just dirt and grease. Off it comes. Not too bad. Yeah, we've got a bit of Autosol. We use Autosol. Of course, there's, I think, Mother's Mag Polish. Whatever brand you can get your hands on. Here we go. Give that a good old scrub. And lay it down. And it'll be good as new. And it's non-abrasive too. You can use wet and dry, we do sometimes as well, but in this case, these big ones here, you can get a lot of um, leverage on them to, to give them good elbow grease, good polish, and um, well, no doubt we'll also change the the coil sleeve. Yeah, it's, we've got them in stock, so we'll change that. Uh, oh, there's a new one right there. So in that goes, straight away. And we're ready to go. Okay, so um, we'll just come back with part two of this video in just a moment and um, show you what else we do. Uh, so we're just going to clean all that crud off it right now. All right, we've cleaned this score reel up to our satisfaction. So that's all nice and clean and polished. The, um, the frame's nice and clean and polished. Just to point out, this actually uh, didn't come off. That was just sort of scored into it so over here is good um, now we've cleaned up the rack and um, 
we've now we've done the um, the bracket, the, the coil stop bracket. Now this little white bit here um, that prevents the end of stroke switch from hitting the frame. So if that's missing, you'll get all sorts of problems. So always check for that. Uh, there'll be a hole there for it. You'd have to put something in there. Uh, the other thing that can go horribly wrong is if you haven't got the um, the black bit of rubber here on that where it hits the switch, you can get problems there. And we've polished the, uh, the plunger itself. Now this plunger is one of those ones that has a, an insert in it. Not, not all of them do, but uh, you can once again get a lot of problems if that insert's not there. There's a spring. Now we've cut a couple of rungs off that spring. We always do that. Uh, these springs, what's this machine, about 73, so 47 years worth of tension. Let go tension, let go tension. They, 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 they get, lose elasticity. So cutting a couple of rungs off does not hurt. Now I've worked with springs personally for over 50 years. And in the old typewriter game, we, even, we did that regularly, re-loop springs and, and cut them to strengthen them a bit. Um, it's no um, fix though for trying to fix sticky parts. You've got to fix the problem first. So okay, so here we go. We're going to reassemble this now. Um, first of all, we're going to put the um, the rack back in. So that just goes in, goes under the switch actuator. That's the switch actuator, just there. Goes into place. There it is. We're going to put the washer, uh, the plunger in, I'm sorry, uh, for, into that. Now you just got to turn that to get it to sit in the cradle properly. Graham's fingers are in the road there, but I think everyone can get the, the picture of that. Just, yeah, that's got to go on if you don't put that on. <laughs> you, you, you put that in now, slide the coil on, and just push it all back. Then you've got to get it on the coil stop. And make sure you get it on the coil stop. So it's not hard. Now we probably had a few fingers in the road there but you know I think if you pull one apart and get a bit of practice with it uh, it's a different matter okay so we just use our screwdriver we've got that screwdriver magnetized and we'll just put the first bracket screw in to keep it in there the next bracket screw is going in done and the two top ones. Now this isn't rocket science, this is quite simple to do. Um, it might look a bit scary if you've never done anything like this before, but it is quite simple. There's Spanky in the background having a little look what's going on. He always oversees our work, make sure we're doing it right. Even pressure now, sides. Just while we're doing that, um, just a reminder that the wires on the end of the uh, printed circuit board, you just check them to make sure there's no um, cold solder joints on them by tugging them and twist pulling them from side to side. Um, this is a, uh, let's see, tens, hundreds. This is um, a thousand um, score reel, so it's got a board on because we could have a score of 10,000 um, or 11,000 or something like that, and it's got a score. Same, there'll be one on the uh, TENS unit. There's the TENS unit there. It's got a, a board on it as well for the match. Okay, we'll just loosen the nut back off on the end of stroke switch. We'll put that back in place. Slide the screw in. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to find the nut and the washer. If, put that back on. Quite simple. There's a little... Uh, cut away there the screwdriver to go through that they put in for it for you in the factory so that was quite thoughtful of them and then we'll just tighten that up with the uh, spin tight now fixing pinball machines you've got to have the right tools so it's important to have a set of spin tights for you people watching in america um imperial tools are very easy to get matter of fact i bought two sets of those when i was over there in 2018 i think i went to a a Home Depot, as you guys call them, and um, yeah, they were quite cheap. I think they were fifteen US dollars a um, a go. So um, that was um, that was good. Now Graham's just put that washer over there, and that shaft 
we actually already have um, given that a light dremeling with the 443 tool. Now, here's the important part, right here. What he's doing, he's pushed the, the rack right back and he's going to drop the last tooth like that in there. If you get that wrong, it won't, won't move properly. Then, then, you, then you've got to put your finger there because you've got the spring on it holding it in place. On that goes, and that's got to go in till it clicks. Make sure it clicks. Then you've got to put that bushing on. Now this goes on. Now let me try and get a, a where, there it is. There's a little nodule there. Hang on, Graham, let's take that away for a second so we can show them. Can you point to the nodule? There, right there. And that goes between four and five. And it's generally, well, not generally, it goes between four and five, as you might have heard us say. On that goes. If you get that in wrong, we'll send them in wrong. It won't match or score correctly. Okay. okay, that goes on now. On goes that. Now, put the screws back in. And we'll tighten it up and then we'll come back. We'll put the clip on. Just finger tighten these screws. That's correct. Okay, now that washer, you put it on cup side up. It's cupped up. Just it's when you put the clip it's on. The, it's the other way around from the factory, but I like it like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, it still works. That If that washer's not there, the switches won't sit right. Okay, now yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to check it. Just give it a couple of turns before you do the screws. Just to, just, center. Just to center it. So just spin it around a couple of times there with the plunger. Center it up. Then tighten it up. Right, make sure the two, uh, make sure all your screws are tight. Check now what we're going to do is we're going to check the switches. So here we go. That's Let's get a bit of focus on these switches. That's one to eight. So one to eight. Just hang on a sec, Graham. We'll just show them there. The top switch is open. The middle switch is closed. And the bottom switch is open. All right. Now we're going to go over to nine. Now the top switch is closed. Zero. And zero. The top switch is open. The middle switch is open. And the bottom switch is closed. So once again, top switch is the nine carryover switch. Middle switch is the run out switch. And the bottom switch is the zero or reset position switch. Even though that's closed, they can still be dirty. So it's essential you clean them. We're happy with that score, Earl. Go back to one. Go back to one, and there's where the switches are. And you can check the tension by pushing this down. That's right. Push that down, and you can see the springiness. This one actually needs a little bit on it. A little bit of adjustment on that, so we're going to get the... So we'll take it back to zero. Here we go, back to zero. Okay. Going to get the adjusting tool. And we're just going to adjust that. Smithy. Pretty hard to see with his hand in there, I know. But and now we'll go again see how this. You can see the bit of tension now. Better tension on that spring. When you, when you see the little spring move, the, yeah. When the, the, you see the little one move, the little um, switchblade move, you know you've got good you know, tension. You know you're sweet. Okay, so this has been.